so that's right. Well, that's right. <laughs> so, I mean, it's become something that's adorned Halloween cards and toys and, uh, you know, you can't even list how many things. Because it has become like, it, and, and Ted's right, I mean, Mickey Mouse, sure. I mean, it's that, it's that much a trademark. And uh, yet it was terrifying to people. It was disturbing. Uh, but it never it reached the heights, of, well, maybe in Bride of Frankenstein, but those two. Uh, the element that, that, that got lost along the way was the poignance and the sense of uh, pain and bewilderment and uh, uh, sensitivity that he brought to it. His portrayal in the scene that you'll see again when he first comes into the room and you see him is on an equal with the great mimes, uh, the great pantomimists of all time, including Lon Chaney Sr., including Charlie Chaplin, including give me anybody, anybody. There's nobody who could have done it better. And I think his intelligence, which was legendary among people that knew him, uh, brought all of that to it. I don't think it was James Whale. I think, I think James Whale's just uh, instinctive pick of this guy, because the way he looked, paid off a thousand percent. Just as Bela Lugosi had to practically beg to play Dracula. They wanted to use a guy named Robert, I forget his name. Carradine? John no, Carradine? No, not John Carradine. Robert, uh, I've seen him in later movies. I mean, it would have been a misfire. Ian Wolfe was one, Ian Wolfe, all right. And nothing against Mr. Wolfe, but I mean, you know, that's how close these things come. And, and what you call that is lightning in a bottle. But took twice. Excellent point, and I think, as you'll see, it's not only how Karloff looks in the movie, but he brings so much to the role in terms of um, pathos. Uh, you'll see that the character really isn't an evil character, contrary to beliefs. He's provoked into it, and you'll see several moments where he really looks sort of childish and, and pathetic. And that's why children respond to this movie also, as, as well as adults. I mean, I've, I've shown that movie to, you know, seven, eight-year-olds who can get past the horror of it because they identify with, with Carlos' character. And, you know, as much as can be said about Jack Pierce's wonderful, innovative makeup in that movie, just like any other makeup, as I'm sure you, can, you guys can address, you know, without an actor underneath it who knows what he's doing, it's just a mask. And it's, it takes the actor to need the combination of the actor and the makeup to really create the character. And this is one of the all-time greats. Because Karloff at one moment can be completely menacing and it shows in his face. And the next moment he can be utterly sympathetic. And, we're, and our heart breaks for him. And that, is, that, that combination is what makes a really great character. Shane and Craig, for that matter, both worked for Spielberg, who, let's face it, is one of the biggest directors working now and is demanding about what he wants so he can get the images on screen that he desires. Shane's but be gone beyond that, he's worked for James Cameron, who I understand is particular about how he likes his films to be, and he's worked with Tim Burton, he just did Alice in Wonderland last year. So, give it up. So the question is, in working with guys like that, Shane, how do you think a Pierce, Karloff, James Whale relationship worked on that movie to get it so perfect? I mean, I don't think it could have been done better, and I don't think it ever has been done better than what we're going to see. How do, you, how, do, how do you think he, the relationship worked between actor, director, and makeup artist? In, that, in this particular film, it's, it's essential because uh, You've got Jack Pierce, he's hired to do a very specific job, and it went, like, as you said, through different actor, you know, incarnations. It could have been John Carradine at one point, it could have been uh, Bela Lugosi, Lon Chaney had died, and uh, Conrad Veidt was, a, was a, a, an option at one point. So they may have had an idea in their mind, but it wasn't until they had the base of, of what Boris had to, to bring it all together. And I can, I can tell you, technically we have more advanced materials now, we've got a lot more uh, artistic ability, but there has never been a better Frankenstein's monster done since this film on any level. Yes. We're 
going to wrap it up so we can get to Frankenstein. Just a couple of last things. This man played in Arsenic and Old Lace, which is what Boris Karloff played. He played it. But to make it even cooler, he had a good friend, John Goodwin, do a Karloff makeup on him. What was it like actually not only playing the role Karloff played, but playing Karloff playing the role that Karloff played? Well, it was, it was certainly, uh, it, we, it was a very specific choice because uh, I, I only did the play because I wanted to play the role like Karloff played. I was very blessed that Sarah came to see the play of me playing Karloff, playing the role that Karloff played. Uh, so we had, that was six Karloffs uh, in a row. Um, thank you. But I, I'll tell you, it was very difficult. Karloff was in that play, they wrote a play, it wasn't so good. They realized that the original play didn't have Boris Karloff in it. Someone said, let's put Boris Karloff in it. That's how it happened. They wrote the part for Boris Karloff. Uh, John Goodwin did the makeup, did, uh, I thought, a great job. Uh, I don't, all, all I can say is, I always liked my face, but I've always liked Boris Karloff's face better. So it was him to be able to watch it. Danny, tell them what you slipped into the into the play at one point. What's they, that? Tell them what you slipped into the play at one point. That it wasn't written in the play. Oh yeah, one they and I went ah. It was only Frank left. Um, but I know we're losing you guys, and I know you want to get to Frankenstein. But thank you for asking about that. And you'll see that Boris Karloff does grunt, and he screams, and he growls, but he doesn't say a word in this movie. You're going to see him play this entire movie without saying one line of dialogue, which did change in the next film, Bride of Frankenstein, which is also a great movie. Pomona, would you kindly, for my guest panel, give a standing ovation to these people? Please. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Shane Mahan. Stand up, Shane. Frank Dietz, Craig Reardon, Ted Newsom, Bill Warren, Bela Lugosi Jr., and Sarah Karloff. And gentleman Dan Roebuck, our guest panel. And thank Perry. you. Perry. Oh, and Perry Shields. Perry Shields is Jack Pierce. Perry Shields is Jack Pierce. Perry Shields. All the way from Torrance. Take your seats. We're going to start Frankenstein very soon. And after the show...